Hey everyone, Evan the Paramedic Coach back here with another Paramedic Coach podcast. What we're talking about today is the different services and types that you'll find inside of the ambulance service. Stay tuned to the end, I got some bonus, some, some odd jobs and things you might not know about EMS that you have an opportunity to get into. And I'll talk about it at the end, some really cool stuff. So first, is the emergency medical services side. We're talking about towns, cities, counties, private EMS. So you got to know first, there's something, there's a difference between 911 EMS and then inter-facility transport EMS. So I'm going to put inter-facility transport away for a moment and talk about 911. Here it is. So every town, city, county is going to have a police department, police officer, a fire department that fights fires, and then EMS, emergency medical services, EMTs, paramedics. The difference is this how these services are interconnected and how these services work is different and how they coordinate with each other is different every town, city, county that you work in, even state. A few examples. The police, usually not a rule. The police will do their own thing. They usually have their own police department. But the fire department and EMS is where we're at and where we start thinking about these different options. One of the main options you'll see is there'll be a first responder fire department with a private or county EMS service that also responds to the calls. So there's a lot of different options here. You can have a first responder fire department, maybe they're advanced EMTs or EMTs or first responders. And then you have the an ambulance that comes from a county or private EMS. That's let's say, you know, EMT and a paramedic or advanced EMT and a paramedic or two paramedics, for example, right? That's one option. Another option is you end up with two paramedics. You have a fire department for responder that has a paramedic on their ambulance truck. And then you have a paramedic coming in the transporting ambulance. And then what happens is that first responder paramedic usually gets their first, starts care, transfers care to the usually private EMS like in our county paramedic. And that paramedic takes over care and does the rest of the call. Those are some options for you that you may see. Now, where are we going to work inside of that? Well, obviously, number one, working as an EMT or paramedic at a, at a fire department. Or, again, town, city, county, EMS, private EMS. Private EMS, what I mean by that is a private company. So, obviously, public is like working for the government of like your city town. Private means a privately held company is, you know, like a for-profit company, right, is running the ambulance service, for example, would be American Medical Response, right? Now, what are we talking about with EMS, emergency medical services? People calling 911, they're sick and injured, and they need your help. You're gonna go there, you're going to render your care, you're either gonna get a refusal, or you're gonna take them to the hospital, and then we're deciding what hospital we're we going to, what level of care we're providing, transfer care to a nurse and doctor, and then we're gonna do it all over again, and then we're gonna either depending on what company we're working at, go back to a base, like a legit building base and wait for the next call, maybe do some chores, what have you at the base, or we're gonna be waiting in the ambulance posted all around our service area, sitting in the ambulance all day for six, eight, 10, 12, 18 hours, waiting for calls. And then, you know, we, in between calls, of course you grab food, do this, X, Y, Z, right? Usually it's not a rule, the fire department, I've never seen a fire department that posts ambulances. If there is one, please let me know in the comments. That'd be very interesting. But usually the fire department personnel, they go back to a base when they're done. And then private EMS, there could be a base or sometimes there's not a base. Like for example, we're talking about AMR, for example. There's a lot of private EMS services where they, they, have, they take their ambulances, you go to the base, get your equipment ready. Then you go out for the day and you are posted and dispatch will tell you, post on in this area, post in this town, and you just wait for calls. So that's how that works. So our second type of service in EMS is inter-facility transport. There's an EMT side of this, and then a paramedic level side of this. So let's start with the EMT side first. Remember, EMT is a lower rank of the ambulance, paramedic is a, the highest rank in the ground ambulance. Now, with EMT, we have a non-emergency transport. So for example, how does someone get to their home and go to a dialysis appointment when they need a stretcher? So patients that need a stretcher or need oxygen, 
during transport to doctor's appointments, to medical appointments, to uh, radiology appointments, to dialysis, right? These are certain uh, appointments that an ambulance will be hired to take the patient from home to the appointment, then back home via ambulance stretcher. No emergency going on. No one's calling 911. It's a booked appointment. And then you're the EMT and you're just taking them to and from. Again, usually it's because they either need oxygen en route or it's because they need a stretcher. It's usually they need a stretcher. They're not able to be in a wheelchair van by themselves and they need an EMT there. Or there's, there could be a certain medication that you need to monitor. That's also a possibility. Another possibility for interfacility transport, which again is usually done by a private company, an AMR, American Medical Science, for example. Let's say someone is being discharged from a hospital and they need to go home, but they need a stretcher transport to go home. Like a wheelchair wouldn't work, right? They need an ambulance stretcher to go home. Same deal. A lot of it is patients that are non-ambulatory. That's really where you're gonna be called. They're non-ambulatory. They need a stretcher or again, they have oxygen or some medication or whatever that needs to be done. Now, I keep talking about these medications. This gets into my second one, which really is interfacility transport. We're talking about going hospital to hospital. I keep talking about medications. What if you got a patient going from hospital A and they're being admitted in hospital B and a medication's running? That's where the ambulance comes in. What if you're taking a patient from a community hospital who's having a heart attack and need to go to the cath lab at hospital B? What if a trauma shows up at a community hospital, hospital A, and then you go to the trauma center, hospital B? That's where you come in as the usually EMT, paramedic crew, or paramedic, paramedic crew, vice versa. So you may have heard about critical care transport or critical care paramedics. Now, these there could be things that you're taught on the job with critical care transport, and then also as a certification called critical care transport. How that works in your area is completely local. But give me an example. You could be transporting patients, for example, on blood, on pumps, on advanced airways, just to name a few things. And that's where you're gonna have that critical care paramedic there or paramedic there trained to go from hospital to hospital, right? So that is what we're looking at. Usually it's someone being admitted to another hospital or it's someone going from ER to ER. The ER to ER is obviously the emergent one, but it's considered a transfer, not a 911 call. Get where I'm going? There we go. Our third type of service is a volunteer EMS service. You may not know this, but there's so many small towns and small rural areas that rely on volunteer EMS. And they're always looking, always looking for more volunteers, so much that some volunteer ambulance services actu actually are not 100% volunteer. What I mean by that is they or a volunteer EMS agency. Let's say you're serving a town, but there's not enough volunteers to fill 24 seven as EMS is. So they will contract with a company, a private company to staff their shifts that cannot be filled. This is called like a EMS paid staffing company. You could work at that paid staffing company, but you're working at a volunteer ambulance service or be a volunteer EMT. Usually it's not a rule, but usually volunteer EMS is the EMR level, emergency medical responder, and an EMT partner or two EMTs. I actually have seen some areas where there are volunteer paramedics. I have seen that before, but it's not very common. It's not very common. Usually it's a two EMT crew or EMR EMT. Now, there are so many different ways that people become, and I've seen so many. I obviously started my career as a volunteer, if you didn't know, as a volunteer EMT. So while I was getting ready for paramedic school, all my experience was volunteer EMT at two different places. I had nine months of experience before I went to paramedic school and it was all volunteer as an EMT. So that experience was huge and getting me, getting me ready for paramedic school, which then thank, thankfully, the first semester of paramedic school, I got a paid EMS job 
I had a private EMS service and got the experience and all matched up nicely when I was in paramedic school. Now, going back to what I was talking about with volunteer EMS, you'll see so many different routes for volunteer EMT, people that work at their jobs, people that work at their careers, people that want to check this off their bucket list. Like you'll see everything. And also it's a great way to get experience if you can't get a job right away. The way the market is right now, you probably should have no problem at all getting a job because EMS needs more people. But if for some reason you can't, then I jump in a volunteer as soon as you can. Back when I started, it wasn't the same as it is now. And I, like I had to start a volunteer first. So hopefully you're able to find a job fast and get the ball rolling. You can get more shifts, you can do more. And that's my advice. But if you need to do volunteer, go for it. Number four is working in offices, hospitals, clinical trials, labs, studies, essentially as an emergency room tech or like a te well, essentially, yeah, a technician basically um, doing uh, even stuff like phlebotomy, like blood draws, right? IV starts, right? So the first thing we think about is the ER tech. The ER tech works under the nurse in the emergency departments. And this is very commonly staffed by a paramedic, right? EMT paramedic. There's a, if you're an EMT, they'll give you on the job training. If you're a paramedic, they'll still give you the on the job training, but you'll know the skills because you're a paramedic. So that's usually how that works. Also urgent cares, medical offices. Again, we talked about some, some different um, studies that you can do, um, different labs, clinical trials. They want a paramedic there who is ACLS or PALS certified to be able to, someone goes into cardiac arrest at a clinical trial, boom, you're there, right? And the big paramedic and advanced DMT skill is in starting IVs and then blood draws, right? So you'll see that commonly, let's say starting IVs, starting blood draws, getting blood, that can be done by a paramedic. So that's pretty cool too. So that's another route for you. Now I promised you a bonus. I wrote down a, a ton of different things. I'm just going to name some of these off for you. Then we'll get into it. Movie set paramedics, camps, parks, contract paramedics, events, disaster, and community paramedics. So let me explain some of these to you. So first, we talked about, for example, wilderness par EMT paramedics. You know, places like big parks, national parks, right? Camps. So these are places where, you know, there's a large area and this large area or park may hire EMTs and paramedics to staff their park camps. So like summer camps or wilderness camps, they're going to need a medical provider. They'll hire an EMT or paramedic to be oversee the camp. One thing I actually just popped in my head right now, I didn't write down was oil rig paramedics. So there are oil rigs all on the Gulf Coast of the United States where on the oil rig, people are working, they'll staff an, a paramedic out there. Another thing is called movie set paramedics. So they'll want to, you know, movie sets will want to hire paramedics, to either staff the set of the movie, or you're going to be the paramedic in the movie, right? So the two different things, pretty cool, right? So that's, that's another route. And all of these bonus things, by the way, I've had students of mine that are doing these things actively right now. So it's legit out there. But how do you get some of these obscure things? Getting experience. The one thing I really want to highlight is event paramedics. At your job, you might do events like standbys, like high school football, college football, professional fights, professional sports, NFL, baseball, hockey, you know, basketball, right? Um, boxing, you know, mixed martial arts, right? They need paramedics that you can staff that if you're working in that service area or you're contracted to do so. There also are certain contracts that may get you to travel. There are trims traveling paramedics where you can get a temporary contract to work in this area, or there's a disaster in this area. You sign up for a contract and you work. It's a, something you can do. And the last one I'm going to highlight here is community paramedics. Community paramedics are essentially this. We have the paramedic skills. We teach the paramedic a little more about primary care and uh, health prevention. This can help people avoid that are constantly calling 911 in the community. So let's say you're not your EMS system finds someone 
who's constantly calling for CHF or constantly falling, for example, in their service area, the town or county or even private EMS may send that patient when they get discharged, a community paramedic to their home to kind of figure out what needs to be done in the home to better assist this person. So they stop the cycle of going to the ER, getting discharged, going to the ER, getting discharged, they're not getting better. So we're starting to find these patients in the community and instead of a community paramedic who's learned some primary care stuff, match it up with the paramedic skills and experience, put it together, community paramedic. And it's really, really awesome, the community paramedic. So once you gain experience, you can join that too. It's really, really cool. So helicopter paramedics or long, long transports in between countries even, they need paramedics to staff up in fixed wing or helicopter. These are called flight paramedics. So there is a flight paramedic certification exam. There's a critical care paramedic certification exam. There's a community paramedic certified exam you can take if you wanna get into some of these things. Now, if you wanna get into flight paramedicine, uh, critical care paramedicine, if you wanna get into community paramedicine, usually not a rule, they look for at least three to five years of extensive 911 experience before they'll even look at you for the position. So your goal as a new medic is like, I always tell you, get experience, get experience, get experience. The more experience that you have and you're willing to try out new things, you'll get into those spots. It is very competitive, but not impossible. Nothing's impossible. You can do it but it starts from your experience. And there it is. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school, and how to pass NREMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the Video Vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the video vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description and I'll see you on the inside.